this electrifying performance here for these two teams. teams Very careful people. to make sure that that spark isn't too close to the Goblin Giant. That splash damage can be deadly. Schwartzman instead is going to play lightning. slow on defense here, yeah. yeah. He's not going to have enough elixir to add a giant uh, Goblin Giant of his own to this mix, so expect to see Mostema shut down the Sparky without too much trouble. Yeah, and he's going to have to wait a little bit here for that elixir to build up Schwartzman. A little bit, not too much of a disadvantage. Was for a moment there, but he let that just play out. Let the Sparky roll on through, do his stuff. Well, Mostema is going to play to the small advantage that he does have. Uh, Barbarian Barrel won't get a shot on tower, though, and the first two minutes of this game has been... Uh, just you know, back and forth on the right lane here. I feel, I feel a little bad for left lane. Kind of, kind of left out of the action. There, like a though. pendulum, just yeah, swinging, just swinging in the air, forth. not touching anything. Yeah. No towers <laughs> taking any damage. Not yet, but in about 18 seconds' time, we're gonna reach that double elixir marker, and things might start to heat up a little bit. We'll see. A couple of stabs on the right side for the Goblin Giant, but it's now Schwartzen's turn to counter attack. Won't make much of this push, though. Unfortunately, it looks like he's just gonna let him trickle on in and. Guards are a decent counter here, not ideal. He does have to drop that Barbarian Barrel, but misses the catch for that Hunter. Right, now here he we go, Goblin! Schwartzen actually has a big Elixir advantage here if he chooses to oh, yeah. push hard with it. Wow, he is going to go for it! Lightning strikes the Hunter, and this Goblin Giant gets a couple of stabs in on Tower. And also keep in mind, too, that not, not really anything there, but there's a little bit of extra value there with the Goblin Giant with those two little boys on the back there riding, riding shotgun. The little spear boys, <laughs> ready to do some extra damage. It's kind of interesting that Mostema chose to switch lanes here. He had the initiative and a little more elixir, and uh, I think that he wants to take advantage of uh, the, you know, lack of gameplay over on the left side sure. to try to s swap lanes here. Swartzen's happy to go for it. Apparently, he's sending uh, the Sparky of his own. Yeah, he's fine to match that up. Oh, oh. Blue Sparky gets the edge in that exchange, though. Will he get a shot on tower? Wow! Uh, yes, he does! Schwartzen allows a sparky hit, confident that he can continue this pressure in the right side and keep his preferred lane of play here. Snowball coming out, spread apart that pack there, but still lots of damage going onto that tower. That's a super effective snowball, actually. I think. That yeah, the, that was that was really nice. The left side is still taking more damage, technically speaking, than the right side has. You're technically correct. Te the best correct. kind of correct. By one point of damage, that left side is still a little bit lower for Schwartzen. Are we just going to see Sparky's duke it out on the right lane here? Oh, Sparky. Uh, no. The Goblin's on the guards. tower. Yeah, Goblin Giant reaches the tower and gets several stabs in, down to 641. Barbarian Barrel, not a super effective counter here, but could this right side push land a few blows? Looks Look like at might. this mess on the bridge on the right side. Cleaned it up a little bit there with the snowballs, but... Oh. Right side down to 595. That is getting into lightning cycle range. If Mostema wants to go for it, that would have been a chance there. Instead, he's going to play defensively on this right lane. Yeah, he's going to take some before. Damage. Sorry, the, the lightning is roughly, what, 300 damage? So it's yeah, not it's quite about, there yet. I think it's 300, uh, 307 points of damage. So that would be enough to two-shot that right side tower. Instead, he's going to charge in with another Goblin Giant. Uses the Giant Snowball to get it a little bit closer, buying some more time. And a stab from the Goblin Giant's good. Second is oh, even better! Beautiful. Lightning range and he takes the kill shot! A 1-0 lead for Mostema. That Musketeer on the bridge with a Mega Minion. Yeah. Cheeky play there from Mostema. Looks like the Lumberj oh, not gonna make it. Okay, I thought maybe he was gonna get one hit on that tower. It doesn't happen. Though. Access denied. But with seven <laughs> elixirs <Access>. spent. Access. <laughs> Seven elixirs spent on the Lava Hound. It's going to be a right side push. The Ram Rider denied by Barbarians, though. A great 5 for 7 counter on defense. Does take a few hundred points of damage out there on the right side, but Schwartzen is now pushing both lanes simultaneously. Yeah, I was going to say, what, what are you doing here if you're Schwartzen? How are you defending against this Lava and this push on the right side as well? Well, he's done a great job with the minions to shut down those Barbarians. Mostema unwilling to use uh, the poison to try to take them out or even a snowball to slow them down, but he's focusing more on that left lane, and I think that he's going to be rewarded for it here. Uh, yeah, the Miner does get a little bit of damage there on that top left tower, down to 1811 now. And yet, Schwartzen will hold the lead. He still has uh, a little bit of chip damage coming in from this Musketeer off the left lane, and that right side now down to 1454. Yeah. Gives him uh, a decisive advantage on right lane. Now, I think that Schwartzen is much more likely to try to go for the 1-0 victory in this game. I think Mostema would be happy if it goes to a 2-1, but he's got to knock down a tower to make that happen first. The reason I'm saying that is because Mostema has a relatively heavy deck yeah. uh, using barbarians and you know all these flying troops uh, alongside each other can put together a very scary push uh, but if you let Schwartzen get too far ahead in single elixir time you could just be shut out of the game before you know it.
Yeah, what we have uh, roughly a little bit more than 30 seconds left. Yeah, you got to be able to get to double elixir time if you want to have the right to <laughs> yeah. go for that 2-1 game. And so far, it looks like Schwartzen is holding up on defense against these big pushes. Mostena has maybe one more attempt to try to knock a tower down before he's going to be shut out. Race felt from the Lumberjack goes down. This Rainriders make it off and goes to the tower. Oh, she's going to make it! Yes, she, she makes it! does! Knocks the tower down, and Schwartzen with the... The game is still going on for 10 seconds, but we're already ready to call it. <laughs> Schwartzen gets the win. As expected, production with the prediction. Yeah. Nice play. Well there. done. It's well a 1-1 one, one draw in this series. Again, I'm looking for five games here. I know what's happening. It's coming. We had we had the incredibly, incredibly long series there in Brawl Stars, and I'm looking for another epic series of gameplay here going to five in the grand final for Clash Royale. That was Ram Jack have been opting for Barbarian yeah. instead. All right, let's see. Game three here, tied up one to one. So Schwartzen's deck is really meant to try to punish the sort of things that Mostema uh, is running here with just a Barbarian Barrel, um, a giant snowball. There, there's not a whole lot of ways to deal splash damage uh, sure. on Mostema's side of the board. Those little hoggies, bar barrel out to counter. A little bit of damage on that right tower. 2198, not too much, but a decent little chunk here. The bad thing for uh, Mustimit, though, is that his counterattack, the bats floating on in the Barbarian Barrel, aren't going to really be able to do much to that tower. Right. Uh, so even though he does get a 4 for 5 trade in his favor, it's not much to, to, to brag about, really. Well, we're, those tower, that tower is just going to take out those barbs. Well played. We'll oh. in there. Oh. Bob the Barbarian gets one chop yeah, on the tower. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit of a chop there. Not too bad. I love that. I, lo I love when they sneak in. You love you love the sneaking. Love song. when they get to sneak in. Surprise! Wow. Surprise! Here I am. We got a chop of damage there. Chipping away at your towers. Flying machine is out for Schwartz. And... Yes, it is. Must Slowing on down. Yeah. It's a slow start, but uh, <laughs> it, it's just single elixir time, Allie. I know that you love to see the quick hits, and you're about to see one right now. Roadhog's moving it over I on I the right do. side. Coming in hot. Oh, We're two snowballs. Both snowballs coming on out, and that Barbarian Barrel moving in from Mostema to try to keep those hogs off tower. Manages to get it done this time, but that might be the last uh, opportunity he has to stop it. Wow, an aggressive play out here. Yeah. The balloon trying to make use so of this did he lumberjack. Just... Is it going to get to tower alley? I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, okay, the death damage is there, but is that? did he decide to drop that because he knew the rage was there would give it a little bit of speed for that loon to reach the tower, even though it uh, unfortunately didn't? Yeah, the, the Lumberjack's Rage spell is very helpful to try to get the Balloon on Tower. We've seen that time and time again. Uh, just be that little bit of oomph that it needs to get that extra inch to damage the tower. Uh, and forces out a pretty big counter from Schwartzen in the form of that Electro Dragon. All right, let's see. Lumberjack's moving on the left side here for most Tama. Barbs are split up. Taking both lanes, a little bit of help from the flying machine there on the left side. Oh yeah, Mostim is in a ton yeah, of trouble right now. Yeah, this There's is not looking do good. To shut down this left side push, he's going to be able to repel it. He's doing his best to try to dump yeah. splash damage onto that left side. That's that's huge though. Yeah, the Royal Hogs connect, taking the tower down to 1867, and it's just going to be back to back to back. Those bats are kind of the best response that he has for the flying machine, but Schwartzen is being very judicious in his giant snowball use, making sure to use it against the bats whenever he sees them. And another split push. Oh, here, here come the hogs, here come the barbs. The split push is really clever from Schwartzen because it denies the value of using both the giant snowball and the barbarian barrel on the same lane, kind of forcing yeah, him forcing into an awkward position. Yeah, as, he has to Which side does he defend on? Yeah. I mean, I guess ideally you would do whatever has the least damage, but both towers are, all, I mean, they're, what, five points apart at this time. <laughs> yeah, Mastema not really able to get a connection in there just yet, just doing his best to play Vince. Misses the bats with that giant snowball and is forced to send out the ice golem to defend. But meanwhile, these Royal Hogs are just chip, chip, chipping away at the tower down to 14-14 now. Over a thousand damage dealt to that right side, and Mastema has not really been able to put together a push yet. Yeah, it hasn't looked like anything's really gone in his favor. He spent a little bit more time defending these really aggressive plays from Schwarzen, especially with that, like you were talking about before, that split lane push coming in. And just denied right before the attack even began. Lumberjack yeah. has stopped the bridge by these barbarians. You have not paid the troll toll. <laughs> you may not enter this realm. You shall not pass. Exactly. Bats trying to knock down these uh, real hogs. Oh, look at the tower damage! Giant snowball just can't keep him up long enough. We got two minutes left. 742. Most Tama. I, can he can he defend against another push like that? I I don't know. 
I don't know. That's a full health balloon getting awfully close to the tower. He knocks it back with the giant snowball. The rage is going to push it, but not enough. Once again. Slow and steady wins Ooh. the race. Okay. Balloon is not able to speed up fast enough to reach that tower uh, and shift damage from these world hogs. Connect a little bit. They connect a little bit. Like 100 more damage than that. Yeah, but that's all he needs. Just 100 yeah, here, 100 here. A little here. at a time. Yeah, exactly. He's still got a minute 30 left. He is perfectly capable and comfortable just chipping away slowly at that right side tower. Schwartzen is not trying to impress anyone with his size. He's got plenty of little small dudes swarming around the map, and I think that this might be close to a killing blow. Mustim is putting up some great defense here Ooh. for these giant snowballs, but every single time you see another 100 yeah, that hog damage just that, peeling off that right lane. That last little porker made, their, made his way to the tower. One Ooh, last let's chance see, Let's here. see about this balloon. balloon. Come on, balloon. You can make it. Nah, I think oh. not. No. Wait, hold on. The giant snowball killed those bats. It might have a chance. Wow! But Schwartzen chose to soak that damage to send in the hogs one last time. He's betting that he can get the killing blow right here and not have to worry about another hit. But he's wrong. Yeah, he will have to go get down. Another shot in there. Still, Schwartzen's ahead in damage on the right lane, and there's no big spell on either deck to get the finishing blow. Hold on, you got to knock this balloon back though. Oh, right. that it's was knockback. But death damage could do it here, Ali. Can he get close? It's gonna reach. It's gonna reach. It's in. Schwartzen has. Oh, not done it. Can he cycle back to one more? There it goes. Mustema claims an insanely difficult matchup at the very last minute of over. So, like for for the deck that Mustema is going to be working with this Lava Miner, are we going to see him making more plays later in the game, waiting on that double elixir time? Uh, not necessarily. I think that uh, he knows that there's going to be pretty consistent pressure from Schwartz and early on, and so he's probably going to try to just not necessarily play passively, but try to play defensively. Okay. Uh, but you can build up a really big push, especially if you get a Night Witch uh, to start spawning some bats, and it, it looks like throwing a Miner in there, he's happy to claim a few hundred points of chip damage here and there without Sure, really. why not? Yeah, just because I, I know that some decks, I think it's uh, just, I was just talking basically about decks that are more structured to perform better later in the game because they require, it's a higher cost, I guess, but right. what yeah, do I, I, I hear what you're saying. No, they're, they're both relatively high cost decks. Uh, Lava Hound is very expensive, but Barbarians, Electro Dragon, and uh, the Royal Hogs that Schwartzman is using as his win condition are not cheap by any means, so. Sure. Are they uh, six? What are they, six? No. Royal Hogs are five. Five. So a chance to push out uh, opposite lane this time. There he Austin goes. I got a little he's, bit of chip damage in left lane, but... Uh, he's so slow. He's right. just plugging along there. Little, little Lava Hound. I mean, little Lava Hound. He's got really tiny wings compared to how big his body is, so... <laughs> yeah, he's so clunky. He's it's got tiny little hummingbird wings. surprising he can stay wings. airborne. <laughs> it's physics. It's science. It just works. I don't know how it works, but I'll it take does. your word for it. Yeah. I got a, a degree in arts, so uh, I, I would have no reasonable expectation to be able to predict how, how that would work in the real world. I did not do anything in hard sciences or math, but you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go with my confidence here. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna rest on my laurels of saying words and stuff on the microphone. I'm gonna pretend like that means something. Here we go. Well, it's a big <laughs> hit out on the right side tower from Ostima, offering up the well played. That lot of hound strike not landing as hard as I think he might have expected, but uh, maybe a slight advantage here in double extra time for this Lava Hound deck as it starts to build up a bigger push. It's just that this Electro Dragon is getting great value for Schwartzen, able to reset the targeting of anything that gets too close to it. You see that Baby Dragon is kind of confused as to what it should be yeah. attacking now. That's catch the Mega Minion, and once again, Schwartzen is in a good defensive spot here. He's taking some hard damage off the right side, but with Poison out yeah. of his opponent's hand, it's time to strike with the Royal Oh, the Hogs Hawks. are down on that tower. They made it there, but the Barbarians are just too devastating to shut them down. And unfortunately uh, for Mostema, that flying machine is just going to get free reign to pop those Barbarians Yeah, down. It, he's got two out now. <laughs> wow, and he's going to continue to push. He's got bats and royal hogs in this assault. They're going to get awfully close to the tower. Night Witch starts to stab them down, but now two flying machines stacked up on that Lava Hound. Three, count them, three flying machines firing away. No more push left for Sh uh, Schwartzen to claim here. Or for Mosima to claim here, rather. I think that right side is uh, in dire straits. Now down to 205. Yeah, 205 we'll damage there. Oh! Mosima. Okay, so, but look at this chip damage coming out on the top there. Down to 800. A little okay. bit of baby dragon damage as well. Two, oh my god, 230. this could be it. Ally, Mosima has turned it around. Oh wrong. my goodness! That was it? That's it! That's <laughs> the grand finals are over! In an incredible 10-second turnaround, an oppressive defense from Schwartzen cracks under the might of Mostema!
especially um, the people that are here and um, help me to try match up and uh, hold um, for a uh, win the game. You played excellently. You swept 3-0. That last game, you took it right at the very end. The casters, they were going wild. I even myself was watching that. Looked like you might be crumbling for a moment. How did you make it in those very last moments? I thought to have a loser, but um, I to have lost. But uh, I don't know. He he played really well. He was a flame machine. I didn't have a fireball or something like that. And um, he overcommit in the last second, and uh, I won because of that. Nice. So you're from Italy. Yeah. How far is that from here? Did you? How long did you have to get, uh, travel here? Um, I no, I don't know. A while, and <laughs> is this your first time competing on a big stage? Yeah, it's my first live event, and uh, I happy to have won my first live event. Yes, give it up right here, you guys. That's the story. That's the DreamHack story right here. Your DreamHack Bubble Series champion, Mustema. Hey, this is your trophy. Raise it high and proud. I'm gonna get out of your way. But that's not all. We've got one more. A Galaxy S10 for you to take home. And a $2,000 all for you. Mustema, congratulations. All right. Well, goodness, wow, what a ride, what a journey. That concludes the DreamHack Mobile Series for us here in Sweden. It's been a fantastic ride. A huge thank you to Samsung for making this all possible and to you guys at home as well. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. It was so much fun. Have a great night. Subscribe. Subscribe.